And now, from beyond our dimension, this is the Jeff Mara Podcast. Here's Jeff. My guest is Rochelle, who during her near-death experience went to the next dimension and beyond. And today we're going to learn about it. Michelle, thank you for joining me and welcome. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you so much for having me. Huge fan. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Rochelle, if you don't mind, let's start on the day your NDE happened and go from there. Absolutely. So I'll just get straight to the point. Um, so a, a quick background. Uh, when I was 28 years old, I was diagnosed with high blood pressure or hypertension um, at a very early young a young age and um that was purely uh you know due to uh hereditary uh reasons and after that yes um i was pregnant when i was 32 and my hypertension just skyrocketed and it basically created some um heart condition that i had no idea um was happening at the moment fast forward to the day of my nde um a friend and I decided we were going to have a small hike up a mountain and um, yeah, I took a, a picnic basket and a blanket and set up under a tree and we had a beautiful uh, picnic that morning. Um, so as my, I have to actually tell you a little bit about my friend's background. So she's always been in my life, but she was kind of, you know, a little bit of a crazy friend um, before I had um, any idea of my spirituality or awakening she used to all say she used to always say these weird you know these weird sayings like my third eye is open and uh, god sent me source sent me and I always brushed it off and that's just a quick background of our friendship she, she was my crazy friend uh fast forward to the NDE day so we're sitting on the blanket and she starts with her crazy talk again uh, the crazy talk and she starts saying, you know, uh, Rochelle, you know, I, Source has sent me uh, to, to tell you a few things. And obviously, I didn't believe her. And she kept on speaking about it. As she was speaking, I saw that the picnic area started to fill up with a lot of people. And I said to her, wow, it's getting really busy and noisy. I wish some of these people could just leave and so it can be a bit quiet. And she said, oh, no problem. I could do that. And obviously, I thought, there's no way she's going to be doing that. And I closed my eyes for a second. And lo and behold, when I opened my eyes, there was nobody in the picnic area, which I found absolutely bizarre. So my heart starts pounding. My heart is racing. And there was something inside me that believed her. Um, and I thought, okay, you know, maybe it's just some heart palpitations. Um, I'm going to blow it off. And I closed my eyes and she let me sleep a little bit. And the next thing I know, there was no popping sound or popping feeling. Um, I, it felt like I sat up from my lying position and I looked around. Everything looked the same at the picnic area, but there was almost a glitch in the sky and I couldn't understand what this glitch was and um so I sat up and I looked um when I looked next to me my friend was no longer there and I knew something had happened to me and I thought oh my gosh <laughs> you know what happened where am I like am, am I dreaming or you know I was lying on the on the blankets and I thought this must be a dream and I sat up and I looked and I saw this glitch and it's almost like if you take two pieces of a screen and you fit it together, it's just out of place. Like the one frame does not fit the next frame and everything just had a glitch. And I found that, you know, really weird. And I thought, okay, from the, this area and I, something, it's almost like um, a feeling that came to me and said, well, you're no longer on earth. It was kind of a feeling. And I thought, if I'm not on earth, then where, where am I? And as I had these questions inside of me, um, I started feeling a pulling. It's almost like something started pulling um, or tugging at me and taking me somewhere, but it was more my soul and not physical. Well, at this point, I was still physical. I had a body. I was looking at this glitch in the sky. Um, but I felt this tugging and I felt this pulling. And then 
when I let go and I just get, like gave into this pulling feeling, I found myself in a void. It was a complete void. And then I automatically knew that I, I had left my body. Um, in this void, you know, everyone talks about the void. I wasn't there for very long. But like you said, Jeff, on the other interviews, it's the, the darkness, the blackest black, you know, you've ever seen or you experienced. And I wasn't there for very long um, where three beings came to me and they said, Rochelle, I need to, well, this is all telepathic. They said, Rochelle, I need to show you a few things. Um, mind you, Jeff, before this, I was probably agnostic. I, I knew I believed in something, but um, I didn't know about source. And these three beings of lights, they also had a human shape, um, not male or female, just made of lights. And they said, okay, I have some, you know, I need to take you somewhere and show you something. I went with them. Uh, the first instance, they put me in a scenario where I was laying on a hospital bed and my friends and family was around me. I must have been the same age. And they said to me, you need to say goodbye to your family now. So when I was lying on the hospital bed, this is the one scenario. Um, I was lying in the hospital bed and I started, you know, out of body, just I, I watched my body on the hospital bed. And then I went around to each person in the room, just saying goodbye and whispering in the ear that I love them. Um, at this point, my daughter was uh, six years old. So I went to her and I whispered in her ear that I loved her very, very much. And I'll see her soon. Um, and then I don't know what happened, but the next instant I was literally at source. It was just bright light and love and everybody that passed was there. Um, my brother-in-law was also there and it was complete bliss. It was just something um undescribable it's something that you cannot explain to someone there's no like they said a lot of people say there's no words there is no words to describe source and um the second scenario they asked me um I need to show you something more so while I'm at the source they asked me do I want to stay there or do I want to see my daughter again and I and I said no I definitely want to go back down to my daughter and before I got to um, into my body they put me through a second scenario so the first scenario was acknowledging that I had died the second scenario was now that you now that you understand about death um, you need to understand how to protect yourself because not everything is you know um, roses down up in earth and so what they did was they showed me in order to protect yourself you need to take that source light you know, fold it down into the center or your third chakra and keep it there. And this is how you deal with negative entities. You take that source and you just build it up inside of you. Once I knew how to do that, um, I then popped down back into earth, but I didn't go directly into earth. It was now back into the dimension with the glitch. And as I understood this dimension, I slowly filtered back into the third dimension. Um, when I got there, when I got to the third dimension, back into my body, um, my friend was next to me. Um, she was probably, you know, crying, sitting over me. I could see those tears running down her cheek. And she said, where have you been? You, you weren't breathing. And... Though I had the weirdest reaction, I actually started laughing and I was, I was so, so happy. And I said, oh my gosh, you know, I need to tell you something. I need to tell you something. And I said, I know I died. And I just, you know, brushed it off. And I said, no, let's, don't worry about me dying. It's fine. I need to tell you something. And um, she was absolutely broken. Um, so I tried to explain to her what happened, but that didn't happen. Um, yeah, so we packed up and I knew that, you know, she wanted to take me to the hospital, which I refused because I felt so alive. I felt so fantastic. I felt like I was just like rejuvenated. Um, so we ended up not going to hospital that day. Um, we did go the next day, however. So yeah, that was my NDE. Thank you for sharing it with us. 
when you talk about the dimension with the glitch, yes. which dimension is that? I do believe it's the next dimension that um, we are all going to after this one. So I know there's, you know, there's different number of dimensions, the first, second, third, fourth, fifth. Mm -hmm. I do believe I've seen the next dimension. I don't know. Some people maybe call it the fifth dimension or the new earth. Um, but I do believe this glitch, it's the colors are just more color. It's more, it's more vibrant and colorful. It's, uh, it's crystal clear. The the air is clean. It's yeah. I would say that it's literally the next dimension after Earth. I really do believe that. When you're describing the glitch, if you saw like an object, would the next object just see a little bit off center from there, like everything's doubled or something it's, completely yeah. different? It's almost like if you're looking at a TV screen, and the pixels are just off in 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 a linear line in a line so the, the top part of the screen is just off center compared to the bottom part of the screen and that it looked like nothing did really fit mm. um but yeah like i said the image was completely completely clear um and i actually knew like a feeling that that was definitely the next dimension i didn't see any beings or animals in this dimension but i just kind of knew that it was the next dimension yeah Do it's a knowing you're saying that it's completely clear, but it has this kind of offset to it. Yeah. Do you think it's offset yeah. because you're trying to look at it from a 3D, third dimension viewpoint, and it just doesn't completely click for you? Absolutely. Absolutely. I also think it is almost like whoever was showing me this, they wanted to make sure that I knew it was not Earth. It was a next dimension. That's what I, I believe. Yeah. And why do you think they showed you the next dimension? Um, I think part of the reason my I have the NDE and what they've shown me, like in terms of the protection and the scenario and whatever I've been through, I do believe that it's all part of a puzzle. They wanted me to see a things, you know, see things from a different aspect, a different view. And also because I, I came from a very agnostic background, they needed me to see certain things in a different way um, and just put it all together. That's what, I don't know, that's what I believe. Mm -hmm. They advised you to put energy into your third chakra to protect yourself. Mm -hmm. Did they describe yeah. what these dark entities or what you're protecting yourself from? Yes. Yeah, so it's very subjective. Um, everyone has um, their own, let's say, demons that they have to deal with in life. Whether it's someone that, you know, has, I don't know, put you through a lot of trauma. Um, the darkness could be someone that, you know, um, affected your life negatively. It could be a darkness from a past life. It could be any form of darkness. And this is what they wanted me to do. It, Basically, it doesn't matter what kind of darkness it is. Um, they did say all you need to do is just literally put the source light inside of you. And that's all you need um, to fight off the darkness. But for me personally, I do believe um, it's very three dimensional darkness. They showed me that um, this is only after I figured, you know, when I when I went back on my NDE trying to figure out, you know, what everything meant, I realized that the light that was inside of me was meant for the physical darkness on earth. Um, only because I started seeing a lot of things after my NDE that were completely physical. I would see um, a dark entity inside of someone or there's someone, you know, someone's face would literally change in front of me. Um, and then I would use this this light inside of me just to radiate it. And this person would all of a sudden feel uncomfortable, which I found, you know, a little bit scary at first. But the light inside worked. Um, that's what I use it for and I still use it for. But I do feel like it's very subjective. So that light you can use for your own kind of darkness that you need to deal with. Do you meditate or something every day and try to visualize that light within you? Or do you only do that when you feel like you're in a situation that needs it? 
Oh, absolutely. No, I, I use it all the time um, whenever I can, simply because, Jeff, you know, when I came back from my NDE, I had about four or five abilities that I was not ready for. And one of them was seeing um, the negativity in the world, seeing negativity and darkness in a person. And um, that's why I use it absolutely all the time. I have no choice, you know, but to use it. Um, so, yeah, that was part of my abilities that I came back with. And that's why I use them now all the time. Do you feel that nearly everybody or everybody has darkness within them from what you see? I think um, everyone's on a certain level in their life. Their soul is evolving at a different rate compared to the next person. But we all have darkness in terms of maybe, you know, traumas that we need to deal with. But in terms of actual darkness that's on the planet, I do believe there is that. Um, but there is also the darkness that we need to individually deal with. I posted a video yesterday of a woman who met beings and they told her that we need to change our ways or bad things are going to happen on the planet. Do you feel that from what you've seen, the amount of darkness on the planet has been increasing? Again, Jeff, you know, um, my, my answer is going to be the same almost for everything. It's, it's very subjective. If you see the darkness happening on the planet, it's because you need to see it. There's a reason why you see the darkness. It's because you need to deal with whatever is going on with you. But if you don't see as much darkness and you don't see what's going on, maybe that's just your form of frequency that's, you know, getting higher. It's your form of frequency that's rising that you don't see the negativity. But I do agree there is, there's a lot of, I wouldn't say darkness, there's change going on. And, um, if you are ready to deal with it, you know, then that's very subjective. So yeah, there, there is, uh, there is, let me just say there is darkness and there is um, the way you deal with it. There's two different things. That's what I believe. Are there any other ways to deal with it besides putting the source light within your chakra? I think everyone has a mechanism. Again, Jeff, you know, you have so many guests on here that talk about the NDEs. And I don't know if everyone has realized that Every one of the indie, you know, NDE guests has a message and or they have an ability that they came back with. Um, some, you know, see sacred geometry. Uh, they come back with the ability to use sacred geometry um, and they use that to deal with the darkness and they use that to, you know, enlighten themselves. And then maybe you have a guest that comes back and, you know, they are dealing completely only with frequencies. Um, or maybe quantum physics. And the way I see it is that each of those individuals have a way of dealing with the darkness. But what I think you, you know, what we all need to do is we need to start putting all of them together. These NDEs are not separate, even though they seem very different and they seem very similar at the same time. But every NDE has a message. And I think what we need to start doing is that we need to start taking every single NDE experience. We take that information and put it together, especially on the three the three D planet that we're on now, so that we can deal with what's going on. I think everyone has a piece of the puzzle that's missing, um, and I think that's what we're failing to do. You know, some people don't want to deal with ghosts, and they are only interested in quantum uh, physics, whereas maybe they don't realize that. You know, maybe ghosts exist in the quantum realm or, you know, someone that has a, ge a ge sacred ge uh, geometric, you know, um, patterns um, that is so linked with frequencies. So we can't we can't take every single NDE to be, you know, completely separate. Um, we need to start putting it all together and in order to deal with the darkness. And also, Jeff, I think that, you know, when you when you talk about the darkness and I think everyone can feel that there's a change and you, you can feel that heaviness that's going on. Um, but what we need to do is understand that there is a reset that's going to happen. There is a reset coming. Um, but our job as humans on earth, we need to start taking every single message and, you know, every, I don't know, piece of the puzzle and like put it together and start realizing, you know, that, we need to first conquer the third dimensional plane 
before we can ever, you know, think of going to a fifth dimensional plane. Because if we see what's in the fifth dimensional plane, Jeff, I don't think, you know, everyone will be too happy. I think a lot of people will be super scared. Um, they're not ready for that. So I think when you have all these people coming on with NDEs, we need to take everybody's, um, you know, uh, message, put it all together and start mapping out what's going on on the 3D plane. Um, so, yeah, so for dealing with the darkness, I think every single piece of the puzzle is in front of us with every, you know, person's message. And this is how we start dealing with with, with the third dimensional happenings. What is it about the fifth dimension that people won't be happy to see? Okay. So um, when I came back from my NDE, I came back with a few uh, abilities, you know, and um, one of them was literally seeing uh, the next dimension. It's almost like stepping into the third and stepping into the fifth, you know, at will. And um, in the fifth dimension, it's everything that you can imagine. So if your if your thoughts are negative, that's exactly what will happen. If your thoughts are positive, that's exactly what will happen. Um, so at the moment, what I do, you know, when I when I kind of bounce between the two, um, I came back with the ability to see the sky for what it is. Um, and I know that sounds a little bit weird, but there is a structure in the sky that is not man-made. It's more of an organic technology. And it took me a very really long time to understand this. And then I realized what I'm actually looking into when I see the sky and the stars is actually the next dimension from this plane. And, you know, Jeff, it, it was so scary when I first saw it the first time. Um, I never wanted to step outside because I could see exactly what was going on. It looks like this huge, huge structure in the sky. And so if 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 if, if anyone is not, not ready to see that, can you imagine what chaos that will, you know, that will create in your life if you're not ready to see that? So, yeah, that is the difference between the third and the fifth for me. Is this structure something that's naturally occurring or something that's been made by somebody, oh. some being? Yeah. Um, you'd, again, Jeff, you know, I was agnostic. I did not believe in anything. And I needed proof, you know, obviously to to confirm what I'm seeing in the sky is correct. Um, so, no, it is not. It's not a natural occurrence. It is more of organic. I, I'm not sure if you heard the term before organic technology it's a technology that is very lifelike um it's not something we could possibly understand at the moment it doesn't because it works with our consciousness um so yeah sorry what was that question again well you answered it basically mm -hmm. but let's go deeper what did it look like yeah okay so the structure in the sky um it looks like one big, I, I'm not sure if you heard the term a city in the sky. There's there's been, you know, terminologies where a lot of people describe they've seen a city in the sky where it's just a bunch of lights and they all inter interlinked and it looks like one massive um, let's say mothership that uh takes up an entire, probably bigger than Earth. It just wraps around Earth or this plane. Um, and that's what it looks like with a lot of lights, but it's definitely connected to our consciousness. So if your soul and your being is ready to see it, you will definitely see it. But it's it's literally looking into the next dimension. That's what I see. Do you see it in both day and nighttime? Mostly at night. Um, I think because of the, the play of light. So during the daytime, I don't really see much. I do see, you know, some um, objects, but mostly at night where there's not a lot of light. So did you grow tired of seeing it and forced yourself not to have that ability anymore? Oh, I, I, I can't get rid of the ability, to be honest. Um, I've, I've just learned to deal with it. I, I've, I, it took me a couple of years, but now I, I do see them as non-threatening. Um, so yeah, I do deal with it. At first, I accepted it. At first, were you walking around and thinking, 
why doesn't everybody else see this? You know, (laughs) am I crazy or is everybody else crazy? (laughs) Absolutely. I thought like, you know, I cannot be the only one. And that is why I thought, you know, I was losing my mind because um, I thought, well, there's so many astrologists and astronomers and, you know, I thought surely they have to see something. But Jeff, I promise you, I've, I've researched this a million times and there is one Italian um, telescope maker. I think it's called the Santellini telescope where I, I'm not sure what kind of lens he used and it reverses the image. And what he found was that you can Google this. It's called the Santellini telescope. And what it does, it reverses the image and what he found was the over major cities, there are objects in the sky that are moving synchronistically, or I don't know how to say that, <laughs> at a synchronistic like place, um, and they're all moving together. And, and you know, the scientist, S- Santolini, he was um, outed by his fellow scientists. And I thought, oh, my God, like, you know, why, why doesn't anyone speak about this? This is exactly what I'm seeing, but without a telescope. So yeah, I was I was very freaked out actually. Besides this guy, have you ever met anybody else or read that anybody else has described this? Absolutely. Um, there is a YouTuber by the name of Jason Brashaw, and he has a channel called Archaics. And what he's done is over the past 26 years, he has gathered all this information and he does not do any research on the internet. He doesn't use the internet. He only uses past history books. And what he's done, he, he's come to the conclusion that there is a structure in the sky. Um, he called it a structure in the sky because going back to ancient times um, in his history books that he's read, they talk about a city in the sky or lights in the sky. And this is just another confirmation. You know, his whole channel is dedicated to the simulation. Um, He talks about the the structure in the sky, the simulation, how everything is connected. And he also talks about the next reset, how the structure in the sky is connected to the next reset. Um, He almost talks about it as a clock in the sky where everything aligns and everything is clicking and ticking until the time comes where there will be a reset and this structure in the sky has been seen in in past um, history books where they describe it as the sky glitched and everybody saw what is going on in the sky and then it was covered back up by the clouds. Um, so he also described this. So that was another complete confirmation that I'm not like, you know, I'm not going crazy at all. Do you think that we live in some type of simulation like the Matrix? Absolutely, absolutely. But it's so, like I said, Jeff, you you can't take quantum physics and simulation and science and, and, you know, draw the line because it's connected to our consciousness. It's connected to our soul. It's connected to our frequency, all of that. Um, So, yeah, I do. Sorry, what is the question? Do you think that we live in a simulation like the Matrix? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Yeah, everything is connected. It's connected to our consciousness. Whatever's in the sky is connected to our consciousness. Um, Like I said, like Jason said in his his YouTube channel, is that he cannot come up with another reason or explanation than a simulation. Everything leads back to a simulation, which I completely agree. Not only because I see it every day. It's because um, there's just too much evidence that leads to it. And I'm glad everyone, you know, is now starting to speak about the simulation because five years ago, I was like literally standing on top of a mountain trying to warn everybody. Uh, But now slowly, you know, everyone's accepting it, which is, which is awesome. So when you had your NDE, did you leave the matrix? Yes. Yes, I did. Um, So when I had my NDE, Um, Obviously, I went to the fourth dimension, uh, which was the next dimension or fifth dimension, however you want to see it. Um, I had to leave, you have to leave these uh, physical dimensions in order to get to source. Source is not a physicality. It's a a source is a state of being. It's a state of love. It's a state of uh, just love and knowing and bliss, peace, uh, peacefulness. Yeah. I think that's the highest non-physical dimension. 
since you've had an NDE and you've watched some of my NDE videos, do you think it's necessary that everyone on the planet should be watching and learning from these? Absolutely. Um, I do believe everyone that came back with an NDE, they probably came back with an ability. These abilities are not for themselves. These are not um, abilities that they are going to keep to themselves. It's not for them. It's for humanity. It is for us to raise our vibration, get ready for the reset. I honestly think it's service to others. This is, I mean, if if we had to use these abilities, you know, why don't we just play the lotto and live on an island and, you know, uh, but it's not for us. That is why we have to share it. It doesn't work only for us. So I do believe it's happening for a reason um, that we need to start preparing. We need to start understanding our third dimension, because if we don't understand where we are now, we cannot understand what is coming because what is coming is something that is not, you know, it's not physical. It's a vibrational upliftment. It's, it's, you need to match it in order to be with the next dimension. That's what I believe. Yeah. What do you think is the best way to prepare and match this? I think what we need to start doing is putting the pieces together. I know there's some people, like I said, you know, they don't want to dabble in spirits or mediums or ghosts and there's some people that don't really want to understand or accept the simulation theory and I think what we need to start doing is listening to these stories and maybe take away a piece of the puzzle whether it's how to meditate whether it's looking at you know angel numbers that you see everywhere whether it's sacred geometry we need to start putting all these pieces together because it makes up a whole and this whole picture is what we'll be facing and like what we'll be seeing in the next dimension. In the next dimension, it's not separate. It's not years sacred geometry, years frequency, years, you know, mediumship. It's not any, it's it's all combined into one big cluster. And we need to understand that now and here before the reset comes. I think that's what we need to do. So whatever, I feel like you need to start going within. So if you feel like meditation is going to take you to the next level, if you enjoy sacred geometry, if you love to look at quantum, you know, uh, physics, then I think you should do what you feel needs to be done. Can you tell us more about what's going to happen once this new change takes place? Um, I cannot say exactly, obviously, because, <laughs> you know, I haven't experienced it yet. But I do believe it's a much higher frequency that's coming in. Um, these are our frequencies that that needs to be matched. I don't know if you've seen there's a lot of, you know, destruction and there's a lot of death and there's a lot of, when I look at those and I view that, I, I feel like it's um, an outlet for souls that are not ready for the frequencies. Um, so I do believe it's going to be a completely different frequency that's going to be coming in. Yeah, much higher. How soon do you think this is going to happen? So again, one of my abilities is clear sentience. I'm not sure if you understand a lot about clear sentience. It's a lot of messages. Um, so I came back with the ability to put everything together and look at it from a different perspective, look at everything. Um, and one of the messages was that it will happen in this lifetime. I've been shown this in the astral realm in dreams they have said that it will be in this lifetime and that I need to get this message out, basically. So, yeah. Do you feel like the structure that is in the sky is in charge of everything in this dimension? Oh, no, no. I do believe this dimension was hijacked. Um, so I do believe there's a, uh, there's a simulation that is happening, but there's also a simulation, um, a fake simulation that's over this plane, kind of like blinding us. They call it the veil. And this is what is stopping us from seeing the actual plane. But the veil will obviously only be lifted once we have reached that frequency to be able to see the proper simulation or dimension. Who do you think hijacked the simulation? Well, Jeff, there has to be darkness with, to, to you know, understand the light. So I do think it's just the yin and yang, the balance. It's just how it's supposed to be. Yeah, I don't think there's a specific um, 
uh, you know, being or group of people or you're on earth, they, they could be. But I just feel like everyone is just playing their part, whether it's a dark part or a light part, it's their part to play. So, yeah, it's not specific. Can you tell us about some of the other abilities you came back with? Sure. Um, so I, I got the clear sentience, which, you know, took a long time for me to understand. It was just a complete knowing um, I absolutely knew information that was true. I can't explain it to anyone, you know, or any, I just knew the truth. Um, the second ability was seeing the structure in the sky that really freaked me out like a lot. So I saw the structure in the sky. Um, and then I could also see energy patterns in the air. So it almost looks like um, a fingerprint that's in the air, like a fingerprint pattern. Um, and it's just keep on moving so that I see all the time. Um, the other one is more uh, telepathy, which is kind of a weird story because, again, it freaked me out. Um, so what happened was with my telepathy story was um, I used to get these feelings of, I, I'm not sure how to say it, it's a, a feeling of knowing, a feeling of information. And I couldn't understand what it was. And it, I got this pressure like right across my nose and across my forehead and by my temple. And they it would just come and it would just go. And I couldn't understand. So I decided to test it. And I realized every time anyone is trying to contact me, whether they're thinking about me, whether they want to pick up the phone, whether they are just talking about me, um, I used to get, I get this feeling in you know in my forehead and my sinus area and I remember once my sister came to um the, the front gate of my house and before she even got there you know I knew already that she was on her way um a minute before she got to the gate and I picked up my phone and I was like hey are you at the gate and she's like yeah how did you know I was at the gate that's weird and um I had friends overseas that used to think about me and I used to pick up the phone and say hey um are you guys talking about me and they're like geez like how, how did you know that we were speaking about you and so yeah th that's one of my books is like I know when is someone about to contact me when they're thinking about me um, it was just kind of weird um and then the other one is just um I can't um handle like a lot of crowded areas like I pick up on a, on a lot of energy as well yeah so yeah that's just a few of them has the memory of this experience faded over time absolutely not no I mean I can't even remember my 16th birthday party but I remember this NDE like it happened literally yesterday there's not one memory that I don't uh, recollect how long ago was it this was in April 2018 how does your friend react to the new you? Oh, gosh. Um, I Like I said, my friend always said like some weird stuff to me, like her third eye was open. At that time, I thought it was weird. And she was like, my third eye is open. Um, you know, source sent me. And I just thought it was like, what the heck are you saying? Like, I have no idea. But now our conversation is, you know, completely on the same wavelength. And I, I even said to her, I can't believe you didn't try to, you know, tell me these things. But um, she still doesn't like to talk about the NDE because I think it freaked her out a lot that, you know, that my heart stopped for a little bit. And But at the moment, we're still very good friends. So, yeah. Have you told her about the the structure in the sky? Absolutely. I have. Um, she obviously, able to see she it? doesn't see it. She doesn't? No, no. <laughs> no, she doesn't see it, but uh, she definitely believes me because there's a lot of stuff that we speak about. I mean, I love the fact that, you know, um, Everyone has an ability, especially if you have an NDE. I just love hearing about other people's abilities. Um, it's almost like, hey, what's your superpower? You know, what can you do? I think it's fascinating the way that you put it, that those abilities weren't meant for them, but were meant to help humanity. Absolutely. I mean, if I, that's why you don't find spiritual leaders that have won the lotto or are millionaires, because they, you can't use that for yourself. It's not for you. It's for everyone else. It's for for humanity to to raise the vibration. When you were on the other side, do you feel like it was more real than here? 
Absolutely. I feel like um, this is the dream. I feel like, well, not now, because that, you know, that feeling kind of faded. But when I came back, um, I start, I still got some telepathy messages, even though I was back on earth. Um, and some of the messages were like, hey, these, these, you know, these, sorry, these, um, these people in your life and these experiences that you're having are not real. They're here to level you up to, you know, to the next dimension. So, don't don't take it that serious. <laughs> Sometimes my guests will say that when they first cross over, they're in a room, you know, something structural like a room with a door. What does yeah. that mean to you? Jeff, I cannot, you know, I cannot tell you what that means. I, I honestly believe, you know, our NDEs are so similar, but then it's, you know, there's so much differences as well. And I think there's a lot of people that ask me and they're like, you know, hey, my my dad passed away. My mom passed away. Can you tell me about the big white room? Can you tell me about the bright light? Or can you tell me about the darkness? And I, I honestly, I tell them, I'm like, I cannot tell you that because what your soul goes through during, during an NDE is for you. It is for you to have a lot of understanding. So maybe I don't see the dark void and someone else goes through the dark void but maybe they go through that dark void or the white bright or the room with the door because that is what their soul needed maybe their soul needs to understand white light or their soul needs to understand darkness in order to to evolve so I think the indie is it's not I can't tell someone that's you know maybe on the deathbed or someone you know loved one that passed what happened to my loved one where have they gone I don't know because NDEs are so subjective. It's what your soul needs at that point to evolve. It's so maybe, Jeff, one day you go to a door, you know, a room with a door, and I don't. Um, but that's just what our soul needs. But I do think there is similarities so that we can explain to the next person that, hey, guess what? When you die, you know, this is not it. There is life. There is source. I mean, the one commonality with all NDEs is source, is love, it's unity, it's peace, and it's bliss. Well, that's all everyone needs to know is that there is love and there is, you know, you do carry on after this. But what happens before you get to source and what happens on your way to source is just for you to evolve as a soul. That's what I believe. Do you fear death at all? No, no, not at all. Not at all. I do fear not being with my daughter and I do fear not, you know, taking care of her and being with my loved ones. But then again, I always remind myself that my daughter is her own soul and she'll go through it one day. Um, but no, absolutely not. In what other ways that we haven't already mentioned have you changed since your experience? Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> Um, let's just say I am, I just view material things as that. It's material things. I view, um, you know, life here on earth is literally, it's a game, you know, for us to evolve. And I've also learned that, you know, when they say, oh, love is everything. Yes, it is. Um, but we need to master a lot of things. We need to master ourselves. We need to master the 3D dimension the third dimension we have so much to master our traumas our darkness we have so much to do in order to get to the next dimension what do you think inspires you about your experience i think i'm just looking forward to humanity you know raising the vibration i feel like we're still very very young we're not evolved we we slowly raising our vibration and I can't wait to get to that point where everyone is just um, literally on the same level, where there's no, there's no violence and there's no inequality and there's no duality. Um, and that inspires me just to do better every day, whether it's just myself or one person at a time or one good thing at a time. All right. Well, after watching this podcast, people may want to reach out to you and ask you questions. Oh. Are you up for Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Absolutely. They can email me if they want. Um, it's rochelle.joseph at gmail.com. And I'm glad, you know, to answer any questions, Jeff. I didn't ask you beforehand, but do you have anything that you want to share, like a website or 
a book or anything? Oh, no, that I'm still working on. I will definitely let you know. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, before we finish up, can you leave us with one last positive message? I feel like we should, you know, start looking at our surroundings on the third dimension. I think we need to start doing that that housekeeping that we didn't want to do with ourselves, you know, the darkness. I feel like now is the perfect time to to dig out that old cobwebs, you know, that, you know, you didn't want to touch your childhood traumas or whatever trauma you didn't want to touch. Um, we need to start doing that immediately. But I also think we need to start looking at, you know, our third dimension, the people around us, the people here on earth. Um, I feel like we need to start doing that. Um, not only that, but putting putting all the pieces of puzzle together that we've, you know, like your show, um, all the information. We need to start now, instead of looking at everything individually, start putting everything together and and start preparing for the reset. Um, it's quite sooner than, than what we think. So yeah, we need to really start getting our hands in there, Jeff. I like that you mentioned putting the puzzle pieces together more than once, yeah. because even for me, after doing about 400 of these indie Absolutely. interviews, I'm still putting the puzzle pieces together. Yeah. So it's Absolutely. confirmation that I'm not the only one. Yeah, me too, actually. So yeah. Rochelle, thank you again for being my guest. Thank you, Jeff. And I wish you the best. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for watching the Jeff Mara podcast. I really appreciate you. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. And if you do, there are loyalty badges and other perks depending on your level of membership. All you need to do is click the join button underneath the video to find out more. Thank you for your support.